proud to support the bill. Thank you. And speaker. I call Harete Hipanga. Ete Manawakawa. As I rise to speak to the third reading of the Maritime Crimes Amendment Bill, um, I address this House again in terms of the sheer coincidence and similarities uh, as to aspects around the bill, and specifically counter-terrorism. The bill is premised on maritime counter-terrorism. This bill strengthens New, Zealand, New Zealand's ability to deter and react decisively to terrorism on the high seas. This morning at 7.17am, I received a message from my son, who had, after spending three weeks back here at home in Aotearoa, New Zealand, had returned to New York and on his first day commuting to work at the United Nations via subway, the text said, FYI, I'm all good if you haven't seen the news already, Mum. I hadn't seen the news and immediately I reacted and replied, bearing in mind that I'd received a similar text earlier this year from him in New York around a terrorist act incident, said, Bub, what's happened? He replied saying, bomb, subway, Manhattan, New York City. As a nation, we here in New Zealand Aotearoa are not immune to the threats posed by international crime and terrorism. And that's why this bill is important. It's a lot closer to home than many of us would think, and it's not until one has really been in the personal situation to experience such acts that you don't really realise how much it can impact on your life, personally, but also as a nation. New Zealand has a reputation as a good global citizen. We were a founding member of the United Nations and have recently served with distinction on the Security Council. New Zealand doesn't shirk from its global responsibilities. We are an outward-looking country, whether it be serving on the Security Council, forging trade deals, sending peacekeeping troops across the world. Again, personally, I relate to this. I had a deceased brother, Lieutenant Colonel Hipango, who served with the United Nations peacekeeping forces in the Sinai in the late 80s, early 90s. We know the risks facing the world are many, economic conflict and terror related. That's why this government is keen to forge international trade links, but more importantly in relation to this bill, to ensure that there are the safe mechanisms in place to deal with anti-terrorism. So Madam Speaker, in conclusion, I commend this bill to the House, noting that other speakers this evening have addressed the detailed aspects and elements of it. Thank you. Okay. This is next call is a split call. I call Joe Luxon.